If you are like me and have a spare PC fan lying around, then it is always a good idea to glue a neodymium magnet to each one of its blades and use a more powerful magnet to repel them, so that the fan spins forever and thus produces an unlimited amount of free energy. Sounds too good to be true, right? Well, in this video, let's play around with this infamous magnet PC fan and the so-called Bedini motor to find out how much free energy we can actually produce. Let's get started. First off, the setup for this magnet PC fan is fake. The light bulb is actually powered by one channel of my Labbench power supply, while the other channel provides a voltage of 2.7 volts for the van so that it can slowly spin without raising too much suspicion, since it is impossible to accelerate the van solely through the magnetic repulsion, because the magnetic attraction occurs a fraction of a second later and basically counteracts the rotation. But not only that. If we solder a red LED to three different PC fans and spin them, we can see that two LEDs stay completely dark and only one lights up decently for a very short amount of time. The reason is the driver circuit of the fans, which are all slightly different, but were all never intended to be used as a generator circuit. That is why the first fan basically outputs nothing the second one outputs one half wave of a sine wave with a peak voltage of 1.5 volts, and the third one outputs two rectified halves of a sine wave with a peak voltage of 2 volts. And even if we use the fan with the highest output power, the LED's light intensity would only equal a power of around 0.01 watts. Definitely not enough to power a 21 watt light bulb. So all in all, the magnet PC fan is bullshit. Next is the Bedini motor, whose circuit schematic looks most of the time something like this. As a power source, it usually features a 12V battery that through the magic of the circuit adds free energy and thus either charges up a second battery or lights up neon bulbs. Now all of the mandatory components for it are pretty common and thus not a problem together except the two coils which represent the motor stator section of the circuit. For that, I firstly had to remove the label of a PC fan in order to remove the circlip that holds the rotor in place. After removing it as well, I unsoldered the four wires from the circuits and pulled off the stator with driver circuit out of the case. Then I heated up the connector pins of the stator to remove the driver circuits and continued by unsoldering the two coil wires from two connector pins. What we want in the end are the four wires sticking out from the stator, to which we have to solder four extension wires, which we can then secure in place with hot glue and then redirect out of the PC fan case while the stator gets positioned in its old place. Now by measuring the resistance between the four wires, we should get two pairs with a resistance of above 21 ohms which represent the two coil pairs. After marking one of them, it was time to create the circuit, which due to its simplicity only took around 5 minutes. As a power source, I used my Labbench power supply set to 12 volts, and as the to be charged up battery, I used a supercapacitor. Only problem was that the circuit didn't want to start on its own. A small spin for the fan was necessary to get it going. And as you can see, the capacitor did get charged up, while the circuit drew around 2 watts on the input. So to calculate the efficiency, I stopped the circuit, discharged the capacitor and started it again while also starting a stopwatch. After around 8 minutes, the capacitor reached a voltage of 1 volt. With its capacity of 22 farads, this equals an output energy of 11 watt seconds. For the input energy, we simply have to multiply the input power of around 2 watts with the time the charging required, which equals an energy of 956 watt seconds. So the circuit does feature an overall efficiency of 1.15%. 
Keep in mind that when dealing with free energy here, we strive for an efficiency of above 100%, and this is 1%. But for last test, let's unsolder the capacitor, and instead let's add a neon bulb to the output of the circuit. As you can see, the bulb lights up brighter on the output than it does on the input, which means there has to be free energy involved, is what people would argue now, but that is also bullshit. The reason for this can be found when we analyze the circuit. First off, we spin the rotor, so that a positive voltage is induced into the base side coil, which then pushes current through the base of the transistor. This opens the collector emitter path, and thus current can flow through the other coil, which therefore builds up a magnetic field and keeps moving the rotor. Due to this, a negative voltage is induced into the other coil, and thus a negative voltage is applied to the base, which closes the collector emitter path. Here it gets interesting. The stored energy of the coil in its magnetic field gets pushed into the neon bulb, which results in a small voltage spike and thus a brief moment in which it lights up. Afterwards though, the base side coil gets once again induced with a positive voltage and the cycle repeats all over again. So all in all, this is simply a crude boost converter that definitely not uses such a thing as free energy. I mean, from a logical side of view, you supply input power, have dozens of resistances, voltage drops and power losses in your circuits and still expect more power on the outputs than on the inputs. That makes no sense, but I will give the circuit this, it is a pretty decent fan driver. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.